Hi, I'm going to be telling you how to make a CFA diagram in PowerPoint. You can use the same techniques to make path diagrams and full SEM models as well. So I'm going to start by making my items uh, little rectangles. So under Insert Shapes, I can choose the rectangle shape. Now, it just comes as a regular rectangle with no um, rhyme or reason to it. But if I hold down Shift while I'm drawing my rectangle, it's always a square. So if you want square uh, items, just hold down shift. Now I want to make my outline black. So over here on this top bar, there's drawing tools format. I can change the shape outline to black. I can change the shape fill to no fill. And now if I want to put X1 in there, because it's my first item, I can click on it and type X1. And it's white. So I'll select that. And then go over to my home menu and I'll change the color to black. So now it's a black X1. And I think I'd like that to be a little bit bigger, so I'll up the size of that font just a touch. Now if you want your items to have disturbances, we'll do that with this arrow over here, uh, in Insert, Shapes, and then the arrow. Uh, there's no really good way to line these up, so you just kind of do your best um, and line it up to that dot. When you get close to an object, dots appear at, its, at places on it. If you line up to the dot, it'll just it'll stay there. So even if I move X1, it's going to stay on that dot. Now this is a blue arrow, so I'm going to change it to a black one. Okay, and there's my item X1. And anytime I have something that I always want to stay together, it's a good idea to group it. So if I select it, my drawing tools format, I can group group these together. And now it's just a single item. Okay, so. I want six. I'm going to do a two-factor model with three indicators on each factor. So I'll copy this, Command C, and then paste it five times with Control V. One, two, three, four, five. I've got my six items here. Now what I would like to do is to have these six items evenly spaced and all at the same level. Now you can drag it around and get these red lines all completely perfect, or you can just not bother with that because it's boring. I got my six items. I got my first item on the left about where I want it, my last item on the right about where I want it. Over here on Drawing Tools Format, I can align. If I align to the middle, they're all going to be at exactly the same height. And if I align Distribute Horizontally, they're evenly spaced. So now I've got my six items evenly spaced. Life is good. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to make my, um, <clears throat> my factors, my latent variables. And those are ovals. So there's a nice oval. Make it whatever size and shape you want. Uh, you can change the shape outline and the fill as well. Now, if you were going to be making several of these different things, you can right click on here and set this as the default shape. And then the next time I make a shape, it's going to be black with no fill. But I want both my uh, latent variables to be the same size and shape, so I'm just going to copy this. Ooh, I'm going to label it first as uh, factor 1. And again, that's white. So I'm going to go to my home. I'm going to change the text to black. And I was using a size 20 font, so I'm going to up that. And then I'll just make my oval bigger until it all fits. I'm going to paste this for my second factor. Copy paste, get two of these. Now to line each of these up, <clears throat> I think the easiest way to do it to get it all right is just to look for that red line so that it's, it's exactly lined up perfectly with the center of my second uh, indicator. And this one I'll line up with the fifth. And then what I'll do is I'll make these at the same height. So under my drawing tools format, I will align them to the middle. Now they're at the same height. And I had lined them up over the second and the fifth items, which I can renumber if I like. Just click inside there. It's really fast. And now it's time for me to draw all my arrows. And when I draw an arrow, I can hover over factor one, and it'll bring up these dots. So I can start the arrow at any of those dots. And then when I get close to X1, it shows those dots. So I can I can fix it to one of those dots. Now this arrow is blue. 
and I'd rather it be black, so I'm going to change it black. I'm about to draw a bunch more arrows, and I don't want to have to change them all to black manually, so I can right-click and set this as the default line. Then the next time I draw an arrow, it's going to be black. So I just go to a dot on factor 1, to the dot on factor 3, and it's going to be fixed there. So if I were to move factor 1 or move x3, that line would still connect those two places on, on those items. Okay. Why don't I show you that? Here, if I move x6, the line moved with it. Okay. But I don't want to move x6. All right. So the last part that I need for my factor diagram, or for my CFA diagram, is a, a connection between factor 1 and factor 2 to let them be correlated. <clears throat> now, the shape for this is the ever so cranky twisty line. If you were to use this line normally, it looks like that, which is not at all the shape that we want. But under insert shapes, line with two or curved double arrow connector, if we connect it to two dots, this dot on the top of factor two, that dot on the top of factor one, it looks all nice. Now, if I would like to make this curve a little bit curvier, a little taller, I can do that. Just drag this yellow thing in the center, and you can make it whatever height you want. So if you have three factors that are all intercorrelated, the, the correlation between factor one and factor three, you're going to need to drag it up to make it look all right. But there is my handy-dandy factor model. And <clears throat> if I want to use this somewhere else, maybe it's the wrong size. I didn't pay much attention to sizing when I made it. So what I can do, I can select the whole thing, and I can copy it. Let's get ourselves a new slide. And let's paste it onto this slide. Just a second. Let's paste it onto this slide, but instead of pasting the whole diagram, I'm going to right click, I get paste options, I'm going to paste it as a picture. And now when I rescale, hold shift when you rescale so everything stays the same aspect ratio, the text gets bigger, all the lines get bigger, everything gets bigger together. So it's really easy to make it exactly the size that you want. If I were to not have pasted as a picture, if I were to just paste the whole thing, I can still select the whole thing, but now when I make it bigger, the text does not change, and it gets it just doesn't work very well. So you can't rescale if you paste normally. You can only rescale it if you paste it as a picture. All right, that's the end of uh, my little presentation on making CFA diagrams. Hope you enjoyed it.